Okay, everybody, uh, this is another installment of the five for five, five questions in five minutes. Uh, hopefully, we got some good questions, and hopefully I can get to them all. Uh, the first question is going to be from John M. Uh, how about a little show and tell? What does your 1988 championship ring look like? Oh, well, <laughs> I just happen to have it on. Um, here, I could, if it comes off. Oh, here we go. Okay. So I'm going to kind of go in there. I don't know if you can tell. Ah, uh, okay. It's kind of weird. Eh, I don't know. But the cool thing is it has my name on there. I don't know if you can see it. And then my jersey number. I don't know if you can see it or not. But then the other part says trust, love, commitment, which was one of Holtz's uh, kind of sayings during that run. And then on the top is the ND with a couple diamonds on there. They're fake, though, because we're in college and we're poor. So, But it's really cool. So that was the first question. A little show and tell, which was awesome. Thank you very much, John M. The next question is from Kathleen Z. And just kind of a disclaimer, I've known Kathleen for almost 30 years. Uh, she was a great supporter of me when I was with the Chicago Bears. And when I had my Chris Zorch Foundation, she would help out a lot. So she has a great, great family. And her question is, what was the best advice you received from the coaching staff that you would share today? So a coaching staff. And really, I would have to say, of course, it would have to be with Coach Holtz when I was at the University of Notre Dame. And ironically enough, it was exactly what he had on the ring that said, trust, love, commitment. This is something that I've lived by ever since uh, my freshman year at Notre Dame when Coach Holt started to talk about what trust, love, and commitment meant. And literally, it's, can I trust you? Are you committed? And do I love you? And although we're kind of a, a, an all-male athletic team, when you talk about love, it's kind of hard, but the reality is I loved all my brothers that I played with. And so the whole idea of trust, love, and commitment was very important. So that was a great question. The next question is from Chris W. Who was the toughest offensive lineman you played against while at Notre Dame and while at the Bears? So the toughest offensive lineman I played against when I was at Notre Dame, an opponent, was a guy by the name of uh, Mike Wisniewski. I believe he played for Penn State. Yes, he, he played for Penn State. He was tough, right? So he was about 6'6", and he probably bench pressed like 900 pounds. He was, he was just, he was absolutely huge. Um, so that, that was probably the, the toughest offensive line I played against, in, offensive line I played against in college. With the Bears, uh, the toughest offensive lineman I played against was a guy by the name of Randall McDaniel. This guy, he was, he, he came from Arizona State. He played for the Vikings. He was like 6'2", about 275 pounds. And the reason it was so tough was because um, I was 6'1", about 270 pounds. So he was about my size, but he was more athletic than I was. And he wanted to make a whole bunch of Pro Bowls. I think he's in the college football hall, or excuse me, the, the Pro football, football Hall of Fame. So he was he was a great, great player. Um, by far, the the toughest offensive lineman I, I played against when I was in college. Or excuse me, in, in the NFL. The, the next question is kind of a special one. This is Mary Ellen. It's her birthday today, which is awesome. And her question was, if you could pick anybody... Um, to play against, I'm sorry, if you could pick anybody to play with, against, or coach, who would have been? So I'm going to pick a coach, and I'm going to go with John Wooden, who was, I mean, I'm going to go away from football here. Um, John Wooden in basketball um, has the longest uh, winning streak at UCLA, was a phenomenal, phenomenal coach. And I would have loved to have kind of learned from him. Although I learned from one of the best in Coach Holtz, I would have loved to have had a chance to kind of learn from him. So by far, one of, I mean, I would, I would have, the goal of mine would be to have a chance to kind of uh, coach or learn from him. That was my five-minute mark. However, I got the last question. It's kind of my favorite question. This is from Jared. And it says, if you had to pick between Pat Terrell or Tony Rice during this quarantine, 
you had to stay with him for a month, who would it be? Well, I know both of those guys. And although I love them both, I'm going to have to go with Tony Rice. And the only reason why is because, well, hold on. First, let me tell you the small story. When I was in college, those guys didn't even talk to me because I was a year behind them. So they were really mean to me until I started to play. Then they kind of liked me. But I would have to go with Tony Rice. And the only reason why is because when I worked at Notre Dame, we kind of hung out a lot together. Um, he tried to get me to go, to go bowling. Not really a big bowler as he is. But the funniest Tony Rice story I have is we were um, all going out to eat. And it was me, him, a couple other guys that we had a chance to, to work with at Notre Dame. And he really isn't a big eater, which I'm kind of surprised. But we ordered the food, and he ordered like half the menu. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? He was like, well, I'm ordering this for you. And I'm like, what do you mean? He was like, well, I was going to pay for it. I was like, oh, you're going to pay for it? Oh, that's fine. So I ordered literally the whole menu. So he got kind of mad at me about that. But if I was kind of stuck for a month in quarantine, it would have to be Tony Rice. Pat Terrell, sorry about that. Although you do have one of the best motorcycles I've ever seen in my life, I would not pick Pat. I would pick Tony. Guys, that was the wonderful five for five. Five minutes, five questions. I went a little over because I had that awesome, great question at the end. Uh, during this kind of crazy time, please stay home. Uh, let, listen to all um, the folks out there that, that know a lot more about what's going on than we do. And also, stay home. Thank you.